The Pale or the English Pale was a part of Ireland directly under the control of the English government in the late Middle Ages. It had been reduced by the late 15th century to an area along the east coast stretching from Dorky in the south of Dublin north to the town of Dundalk. The inland boundary went into the county of Kildare. The word pale meaning a fence is derived from the Latin word palus which means stake and a group of these ganged together would form what was called a palisade and it's probable that the pale may be constructed from stakes such as these obviously a lot taller. The pale generally consisted of fertile lowlands which are easier to defend from ambush rather than hilly or wooded ground. Within the confines of the Pale, the leading gentry and merchants live their lives not too different from those of their counterparts in England, save for the constant fear of attack from the Gaelic Irish. This is footage from the eastern section of the Pale along the Kildare Wicklow border. This would have been the view from the English side. Here, just before dawn, with the Wicklow Mountains before us, clans like the O'Burns and the O'Tools would have been forced out of their ancestral lands and into these hills by the invading Normans. This land is not very fertile and would have offered poor grazing for livestock, but offered sanctuary. For example, mounted knights would have found this ground difficult to operate in. Now, this is the view from the Irish side of the Pale Boundary, towards East Kildare. The Pale would have run approximately along the ridgeline of the hills before us. This section would have run from Rathmore to Ballymore Eustace in County Kildare. You may recall my video on the large Norman defensive mott that is located in Rathmore. So this is a, an existing section of the English Pale. And out there towards the east, towards the Wicklow Mountains, was where the native Irish inhabited. And on this side was where the rule of English law extended. The purpose of the stitch was probably to make it hard for Irish raiders to steal livestock from the Pale and out to the Wicklow Mountains. It was generally not manned or watched like a defensive wall, but merely a boundary, or at worst, an impediment to the native Irish raiding these lands for livestock. A proverb by the English poet Sir John Davies says that whosoever lives west of the barrow lives west of the law. The Norman invasion of Ireland, beginning in 1169, created the Lordship of Ireland and brought Ireland under the theoretical control of England. Across most of Ireland, the Normans increasingly assimilated into Irish culture after 1300. They made alliances with neighbouring autonomous Gaelic lords. At a higher social level, there was extensive intermarriage between the Gaelic-Irish aristocracy and the Anglo-Norman lords, beginning not long after the invasion. In the long periods, when there was no large royal army in Ireland, the Norman lords, like their Gaelic neighbours in the provinces, acted essentially as independent rulers in their own areas. In 1366, so that the English crown could assert its authority over the settlers, a parliament was assembled in Kilkenny and the Statute of Kilkenny was enacted. The statute decreed that intermarriage between English settlers and Irish natives was forbidden. It also forbade settlers from using the Irish language and adopting Irish modes of dress or other customs, as such practices were already common. The act was never implemented successfully, even in the Pale itself. Thank you for watching, but please like and subscribe, as this will encourage future productions.